أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions Sleeping is connected to day and night, right? So Allah Azza wa addresses the, the matter of night right after sleeping. Allah says in the following verse what means, and made the night as clothing, meaning it covers and conceals you with its darkness. Those who travel by air probably have seen this once during a journey. Shaykh al Uthaymeen rahmatullah says, If you have ever traveled at the time of sunset and when the airplane takes off and goes above the clouds and you look down, you see the earth as if someone has thrown a black blanket over it. It looks as if it is covered with a dark blanket. You know, if night was with light in it, we wouldn't be able to sleep continuously. If it continued to be with light, we couldn't sleep. That covering, that concealing is needed for mates, a man and his wife, for spouses at night to conceal them from the eyes of others. During the night time or at night, everything goes to sleep, almost. Birds go back to their nests. Beasts go back to, jung to the jungle. Every creation goes back to their place of dwelling to rest, to sleep. But there is an unfortunate phenomenon that has become widespread among people and unfortunately amongst Muslims as well. The late nights. Now working people might not be able to do that during working days. Saturday through Thursday in the Arab countries and Monday through Friday in the Western countries. They can't do that simply because they have to report to work next day early in the morning so they can't do that. But they make it up over the weekend. They stay up late. And when I say late, I mean real late. Close to Fajr if it's not up to Fajr. Though Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent by, by Allah azza wa jal as a guide, and he led a practical life of the Qur'an, warned us against late nights. He disliked sleeping before Maghrib and staying late after Isha. A lot of people stay up late. How can someone attend Salatul Fajr that right now is 325 when he had gone to bed at 2 o'clock, how can he wake up? Now some might argue and say, well, I have no problem. 
I wake up. Or I stay up until Fajr and then I go to sleep afterwards. Now, the question here, are we commanded to pray Fajr at that time just to drop this obligation off our shoulders and say, Alhamdulillah, I've done it? Or was, an, was there an objective of attending the Fajr prayer as well as all other prayers in the mosque with the congregation? How can someone concentrate Reflect upon the verses that are being recited by the Imam leading the congregation. When his body is beat and his brain is frozen because he stayed up all night. How can someone be attentive during his salah? How can he achieve submissiveness to Allah if he stayed up all night? I know some people who have lost the ability of sleeping at night. They can only sleep during the day. Look at the miserable life. And on the other hand, look at the great blessing. Allah Azza wa Jal blessed me and you with that we go to bed early so we can Wake up for Fajr, energetic, attentive, hearts and minds open. When the Imam recites verses of punishment, our hearts tremble of fear. And when the Imam recites verses of reward and paradise, our hearts fly in hope to be amongst those who are promised paradise. That is lost when you stay up all night. You lose this. We're not going to talk about Qiyamul Layl. We're just talking about the obligation now. So if someone cannot be attentive or physically attend the prayer in the mosque with the congregation, how can we expect him to pray Qiyamul Layl? So, night or night time, was made, was created by Allah Azza wa Jal for this purpose, for the purpose of resting. Try to be sincere with yourself. Let us all be sincere with ourselves. Let us see what applies to me, what mistake I am making, and pledge to Allah Azza wa Jal that I'm going to give it up. I'm going to stop this. And I'm not saying sins now. I'm saying mistakes. And staying up late is not a sin. It can lead to sins. But it's not a sin in itself. So no one, is, no one would go and say, Hazim is saying, oh, if you stay up until 1 o'clock, you're sinning. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, the Prophet ﷺ told us, I left nothing that brings you closer to Allah, but I have instructed you to do. And I left nothing that makes you go far from Allah, but I have warned you against. So, when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us not to stay up late, not to sleep before Maghrib, because if you sleep before Maghrib, how can you fall asleep right after Isha? or shortly after Isha, it's very difficult. So let us try to be practical. When, when we talk about an issue, whether the speaker or the listener, let us see what applies to me, what I can change, what benefit I can gain from the words of the scholars that are being read to me, or that I am reading, and let me apply it. Let me benefit from what I am listening to or what I'm saying. So we can yield fruits at the end of the session, at the end of every session, not at the end of every day, and not at the end of the course of tafsir. At the end of every verse, think to myself, let me think to myself and see, oh subhanallah, 
I have this I need to improve, this I need to give up, this I'm not even paying attention to at all. Let's work on ourselves, brothers and sisters. With this, we will conclude. And inshallah, we will resume in the following session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu.